Hello, everybody. I'm going to give you a little bit of back background on what's been going on with this book. Um, many of you already know my my crazy story. Um, I live with MS and a brain tumor. And last year, I was diagnosed with cancer, and thank God, it was removed surgically, and I've been great ever since. All of my checkups have been really good, so I'm relieved and blessed. Um, but I started writing this book about six years ago, and I've written six other books and a whole bunch of uh, what they call low contact content books like uh, um, diaries, journals, that sort of thing. So there's scads of those out there. But this one has been very important to me and it's um, it's taken a lot of work and a lot of prayer and people encouraging me and it's been the hardest thing I've ever had to complete. Um, I've given up on it. I wrote chapters and threw them out. Uh, I've had moments where I really thought something I wrote was great and then read it and it wasn't. Because <laughs> God speaks to me a lot of times through the way I write, through, through writing. So some of the stuff that I was writing was actually him trying to get a point through to me personally. So it wasn't. I, as you know, MS, brain tumor, cancer. I felt like I just kept having strike after strike against me. Uh, I wasn't sure that, that it was even a good thing, good idea to write this book at, at some points because when I was writing it, I felt like if all of these things keep happening to me, who am I to share the hope of God? And I know a lot of you guys are out, you know, probably in those those positions yourself where you just see one bad thing happen after another. And and for any of you who've who've watched me. <laughs> They've, you know, I'm sure you've had moments where you're like, well, being a Christian looks like a pretty treacherous uh, roads that you have to travel, right? So, and it can be. But I can't imagine getting through my life without God. And I've been very blessed to have uh, amazing people in my life. And um, one of those amazing people is my husband, John. John has been a rock for me. He has been the type of person that, that you know, He's kind of the unsung hero in our story. He's the one who gets up every day and he goes to work and then he comes home and if I'm sick or I'm not feeling well, that man is right there to help out with dinner and thank God the kids are now old enough to help out too. But he's been amazing and, and honestly, most people are not as good a person as he is. I can't even imagine if things were the other way around, how it would have turned out. I can't sit here and say that I would have been as good a wife to him as he has been a husband to me. And I want, to, I want all of you to know that, that John has been my biggest blessing. feeling he'll probably watch this video later so he's good looking too so I want to thank um, obviously John for supporting me with, with for this he always encourages me to write it's not a you know the type of thing that I'm I get rich from you know I what little extra energy I have I've been putting into this book 
and I really feel as though God has just downloaded these amazing life lessons, but he does it in a way that Rochelle can understand. I used to have, the, oh, I still have this friend, but she's passed now. Her name is Tara. Tara is amazing, and she was very proud of being a Scottish Jamaican Canadian. So you got a picture of that. So she was a little powerhouse, and Tara was a couple of years younger than me. And you know, in, I think she, she was probably about 43 when she passed, and I was blessed enough to be with her at that time. But she always encouraged me to to get out there and and write. And one of the things she said to me is, "Don't try to talk to people or talk to everyone as though they they understand what it's like to be a Christian." And she would say, "Just talk." to the Rochelle because she loved how I was able to break down things that I had learned either through church or through reading the Bible or studying and she said she told me that my gift was the ability to break it down not into a simpler way but just into an, an easier way to picture things right so and one of the ways that, that I've always loved to picture things is through jokes. So she would have me do that for her, tell her a joke, and use it almost like a parable. And I found that I start that that I've always kind of done that in my books. So one of the ones that she really liked, I'll share with you right now. Okay? So it goes like this. There's a a drunk man and he was out for a walk and he noticed that the by the river there was this lineup of people and in the river was a man wearing a white robe and he was dunking people in and they're pulling them up baptizing them so the drunkard stumbled through and he looked at the line of people and he noticed that they, he was putting them in the water, pulling them up, and then pushing them along. And each time he would say to them, have you found Jesus? So finally, the curiosity overcome this, this, this poor man and he ran to the front of the line and he pushed everybody out of the way and he said, what's going on? And the drunkard, or, and the, the minister said to him, have you come to find Jesus? And the drunkard said, yes. And he grabbed him and he stuck him in the water and he pulled him back up. And he said, man, have you found Jesus? And the drunkard looked at him and he said, no. And he threw him back down into the water and he held him there a little longer and he pulled him back up and he said, man, have you found Jesus? And the drunkard said, no. And he dumped him down and this time the minister's like, okay, you can find Jesus. I'm, I'm going to hold him a little longer. So he held him down. And the drunkard started to thrash and kick and fight and he pulled him back up and he said, for the love of all that is holy, man, have you found Jesus? And the poor drunkard looked up at him and said, mister, are you sure this is where he fell in? That's the kind of thing that that I like to teach people with. So that story is in <laughs> that story was in one of my, one of my first books, and I have brought it over. So what I've done is taken several stories from my first books, revised them, and brought them into you know the now. These were written 20 years ago. I was young. I was just starting out as a writer, and now a little bit better at what I do and thank thank God and uh, so I brought that that story over and I've used it as a parable so in that parable I've used it to teach others that no matter what if a person isn't willing you can't make them see and if a person isn't ready to find Jesus no matter how much you push they're not going to find Jesus 
so don't push. Jesus is about love. I love to share him because of what he's done in my life. My book is called Saved by Grace, Changed by Love, because I accepted Jesus years ago, probably way before most of you ever would have even dreamt that I had accepted the Lord. I accepted him as a seven-year-old child, and I love Jesus, and then I went astray, and I had my crazy years, and my partying years, and my drinking years, and, and, you know, and I didn't do too much that was too bad back then, but I did fall away from God. And I recall people talking about the Lord and actually flinching because I didn't want to hear it. And the reason I didn't want to hear it is because I knew in my heart that to truly be a follower of Christ, I would have to change. And I knew I could not change. Not only could I not change, I had no desire to change. I didn't want to change. I loved my life. And I got married and I still love my life. And I had children and I was loving my life. But Jesus loved my life too. And he stayed with me every step of the way. And I found that when I ended up with MS and the brain tumor, that I drew closer to him. And, and many of us come to Christ in a time of need. And I'm no different, and I'm no better. I did that. But what I found was, in that time of need, he started to change me. And as I started to change, I wanted to change. And it wasn't me that was changing things. It was Jesus that was changing things. And through him, my heart started to heal. Through Christ, I was able to look at people who I held resentment against and anger against. And I looked at them through his eyes. And I realized they just sin differently than me. And I have been blessed enough that he has forgiven me for my sins. And I need to love on those people the way he wants me to love on them. But being a Christian, let me break it down for you. It's not that hard to do. Jesus made it simple. He said, love me, believe that I'm the son of God, and that I died, I rose again, and that I am with God in heaven. And believe that you can have eternal life through me. And then he tells us, this is the, this is the part where you got to do something. Because first, first you got to believe something, then you got to do something. He wants you to share that with people. And he wants us to love people. Now, in the book I write about loving being an action, not the fluffy, warm, fuzzy feelings that we get when we first fall in love. When we look for people before they've disappointed us. This is the kind of love that Jesus asks us to go and do. So, go and do it. You can order my copies on Amazon, or feel free to message me on Facebook. I'd love to get you a nice signed copy. Thanks for listening. God bless.